Many years ago, women had limited choices, but that changed. The Philippine Commission on Women, formerly known as the National Commission on the Role of Filipino Women, played a major role in enabling and empowering every Juana to embrace their rights and their choices. PCW's story began in the International Women's Year, which marked the beginning of the UN Decade for Women from 1975 to 1985. The PCW is the first national women's missionary in Asia. It was created by virtue of Presidential Decree No. 633, issued on January 7, 1975, by then-President Ferdinand E. Marcos. In response to the call of the UN General Assembly for member countries to put up a government system that will attend to women's concerns. It was mandated to review, evaluate, and recommend measures to ensure the full integration of women in development efforts. In 1977, the Commission organized Balikatan sa Kaundaran, based on the Filipino tradition of Balikatan or working together shoulder to shoulder. The program focused on education and livelihood to address the problem of poverty by expanding the roles of women in economic, social, and political activities of the nation. But that was just the beginning. On August 5, 1981, the Philippines ratified the UN Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, known as the Women's Bill of Rights. CEDA is the only human rights treaty which affirms the reproductive rights of women and targets culture and tradition as influential forces shaping gender roles and family relations. And indeed, this has paved the way to more changes for women. In 1986, the new NCRFW officials refocused in making the government work for gender equality and women's empowerment. Women's concerns were at the heart of government agenda. Under a strategy called God Mainstreaming, all government arms were given the responsibility of addressing gender issues in everything that they do. President Corazon Aquino's term opened the door for other women NGOs and other groups across the political spectrum. Laws and policies related to women were issued, including the Republic Act 6725, which eliminates discrimination in the workplace. Proclamation No. 227, Series of 1988, providing for the observance of the Women's Role in History Month every March. And Republic Act 6949, declaring March 8th of every year as a working special holiday to be known as National Women's Day. In 1989, President Aquino signed the Executive Order 348, or the approval and adoption of the Philippine Development Plan for Women, 1989-1992. The PDPW served as a government's blueprint for integrating women in development processes. Another milestone during this term was the Women in Nation Building Act, or the Republic Act 7192. It was enacted in 1992, promoting the integration of women as full and equal partners of men in development and nation building. The third term of the Commission set the systems on gender and development. The 30-year Philippine Plan for Gender Responsive Development, or PPGD, was adopted through the Executive Order 273. This was hailed as the Bible of gender mainstreaming in the bureaucracy. The PPGD was the country's main vehicle for implementing the 1995 Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action, or BPFA, adopted at the 1995 UN 4th World Conference on Women. PPGD outlines the policies, strategies, programs, and projects that the government must adopt to enable women to participate in and benefit from national development. Another win in the GAL advocacy was the institutionalization of the Gender and Development Budget Policy in 1995. This mandated all government agencies and instrumentalities including LGUs, to allocate a minimum of 5% of their total appropriations for GAD programs and projects. This policy has been incorporated annually in the General Appropriations Act. Gradually, development planning became gender-responsive. The NCRFW, together with a team of consultants, began the development of the Gender Mainstreaming Evaluation Framework, or GMEF, to measure the extent of gender mainstreaming efforts. As changes in mechanisms were introduced, GAD supporters also increased in number. 
at the turn of the new millennium, the Commission established regional GAD resource centers, expanding the network of gender advocates. In the late 90s, NCRFW was able to develop tools, skills, and systems on GAD mainstreaming. The mission alleviate poverty by making sure that government efforts are felt by women in the grassroots. In the fifth term of the Commission, the Framework Plan for Women intensified the implementation of the GAD budget policy, focusing on women's economic empowerment and human rights, as well as gender-responsive governance. But that didn't stop there. The succeeding years saw the protection of women in black and white. From 2001 to 2004, landmark laws were passed, including the Republic Act 9262 or the Anti-Violence Against Women and Children Act of 2004, and the Republic Act 9208 or the Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act of 2003. And in 2009, a triumph for Filipino women, Republic Act 9710 or the Magna Carta of Women was signed. The MCW expanded the functions of then NCRFW and changed its name to Philippine Commission on Women. During the same term, the Great Women Project, supported by the Canadian International Development Agency, began focusing on women's economic empowerment. During the term of President Noynoy Aquino, more aspects of GAD gained traction. President Aquino included gender equality in his social contract with the Filipino people. During this term, important legislations were enacted, including the Responsible Parenthood and Reproductive Health Law, the Batas Kasambay Law, the repeal of the Night Work Prohibition, the expanded Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act of 2012, which increased the government's capacity to combat human trafficking, and the Republic Act 10398, declaring November 25 as the National Consciousness Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women and Children. In 2014, the PCW launched the Women's Empowerment, Development, and Gender Equality Plan, the fourth gender-focused plan formulated by the Philippines since 1989. This provided a timely opportunity to review persistent and emerging gender issues and to take this into account in the existing plans of the government. Other significant programs were also hatched, such as the National GAD Resource Pool, the Gender Mainstreaming Monitoring System, the establishment of regional GAD mechanisms and local learning hubs, and the MCW Implementation Project supported by the Spanish International Development Cooperation. In the seventh term of the Commission, President Rodrigo Duterte called for the implementation of the Magna Carta of Women down to the barangay level in a State of the Nation address in 2016 and 2017. I would like to reiterate my personal and this administration commitment to fully implement the Magna Carta of Women to the barangay level. In his term, more groundbreaking laws were aimed, including the Anti-Mail Order Bride Law, the 105-Day Expanded Maternity Act, and the Safe Spaces Act. Much has been done in 45 years, but there is no plan of stopping. The Philippine Commission of Women remains steadfast in making government work for the promotion of gender equality and women's empowerment. As the PCW moves towards its golden years, we will continue to inspire more changes, catalyze more choices, and encourage everyone to go beyond limits.